In the last video, we looked at solving basic trig equations. We could write these in the form sine of theta is equal to k, cos of theta is equal to k, or tan of theta is equal to k. An example might be sine theta is equal to 0 0.4, and we might be asked to solve for theta in the interval from 0 to 360 degrees. In this video, we're going to look at a slightly different type of equation, and we're going to have what we call compound angles. So these are going to be of the form sine of theta plus alpha is equal to k, cos of theta plus alpha is equal to k, and then tan of theta plus alpha is equal to k. So we're going to consider basic compound angles. In later videos, we'll look when the coefficient of theta is not 1. So for example, we might have sine of 2 theta plus 30 degrees. So let's look at how we solve these. Well, an example of one of these, this might be cos of theta minus pi by 3 is equal to 0 0.2. Tan of x plus 15 degrees is equal to 1.6. Sine of theta minus pi by 4 is equal to 0 0.8. What we're going to do is solve and find initially a principal value for the angle theta plus alpha. We're then going to consider subsequent solutions, either by symmetry or by the nature of each of these trig functions. So let's start off and look at a nice straightforward example. In this video, we're just going to work through basic examples, and then in later videos, when we bring all the skills together, we will look at some more challenging ones. So let's look now at sine of x, and we'll go for x minus 30 degrees, and we'll give this now an exact value, so we've got a special angle. So let's go for root 3 over 2, and we'll say that x is going to be equal, uh, now sorry, x is going to be in the interval from 0 to 360 degrees. Now, this is for x. We have x minus 30. At this stage, we could write x minus 30 and subtract in now 30 from each part of the inequality. We'd have minus 30, and then we'd have now 330. This is one way to do it. We're going to solve now for x minus 30 in this interval. Alternatively, you can let x minus 30 be equal to a and solve for a between minus 30 and now 330. I prefer this particular approach, but you can make a substitution if you're not happy with working with x minus 30. So let's find now a principal value for x minus 30. This is one of my special angles, so I can write principal value. We're going to have now x minus 30 is going to be the inverse sine of root 3 over 2. That gives me in degrees 60 degrees. What I'm now going to consider is the sine function. So if we look now at sine x, sine x will be equal to sine of 180 minus x. We can also say that sine of x is equal to the sine of 360 plus x. If we look at this graphically, we've seen this plenty of times in the past, the sine curve now is going to be symmetric and periodic. So what we've got then is a, uh, just go from here, let's go round like so. So if I have now a solution x in, I have the same value x minus back from 180 degrees. And this gives us the, uh, the property here. I also know that this cycles every 360 degrees or two pi radians. So subsequent solutions are 360 on and also 360 back. So these are the properties that we're going to use. So if we consider now the second solution for x minus 30, well, x minus 30 is going to be 180 minus 60, which gives us 120. Now, we're looking at x minus 30 in the interval from minus 30 to 330. Clearly, we can see in this case, and I'll just draw that, because we've made an interval change. What we have is this interval right here. So we're not going, let's go to there. That's what we're looking at. We're not looking at 0 to 360. We're interested now in minus 30 to 330. We can see that that now gives us only two solutions in this interval, and they are going to be there. So root 3 over 2, that's going to give us that one and that one. Nothing else is going to do. If we wanted to find subsequent solutions, what we could say is plus now 360n plus 360n. So all this is saying is now we could add multiples of 360 on. But as we can see, these are going to go outside the interval. At this stage, I'm just going to add 30 to both sides. So x will be equal to 90 degrees. 
and then x will be equal to 150. So subsequent solutions for x is going to be 360 on, 360 on, or 360 back. But this now gives us the only two values for x, not x minus 30, in the interval from 0 to 360. So all I've done is solve principal value for x minus 30, then considered now the nature of the sine curve and solved. As stated, you could have solved for sine a between minus 30 and 330. Alternatively, if you don't like altering the interval, you can just list out now multiples. So x minus 30 is equal to 60. x minus 30 is equal to 120. x minus 30 will be equal to 420, just add in 360. x minus 30 is going to be equal to 480. x minus 30 will be equal to minus 300, and then we can see now minus 240 degrees. And then simply add 30 to each and see which fit back into the interval at the end. So we can see that this one would, because that'll give us 90. This one would, that's going to give us 150. This one would not, as it would give us 450. This one would not, it'd give us 510. These are not in the interval. In the same way, these wouldn't bring it back into the interval. Because adding 30 to minus 300, and, uh, minus 300 is not going to bring it back in. So this is another way. Just list them out and see what fits back into the interval at the end. Okay, let's do another one. Um, let's look at the cosine. Let's, again, we'll take the compound angle. So this is another example of a compound angle. Let's go ahead and take theta plus pi by 4. So this time we'll work in radians. We'll have a nice uh, straightforward value. Let's go for 1 half. We'll say now that theta is going to be between 0 and we'll do 2 pi radians. If we consider theta plus pi by 4, let's do theta plus pi by 4, we can alter the interval. So this is going to be from pi by 4 to now 2 pi plus pi by 4 which is going to give me 8 pi by 4 plus pi by 4, which is 9 pi by 4. Again, you could make a substitution and you could solve for cos a. Cos a equal to half, where a is going to be pi by 4, and now 9 pi by 4. I personally don't think we need to go that route. I just want to find a principal value for now pi, uh, theta plus pi by 4 and subsequent solutions. So let's go ahead and think about our principal value. What we're going to have then is theta plus pi by 4 will be equal to the inverse cosine of a half. That's one of our special angles, and we could simply write this down as pi by 3 radians, or if you like, 60 degrees. Let's now consider cosine. The cosine of theta is equal to, by symmetry, cos of 360 minus theta, so 2 pi minus theta. Also, the periodic nature cos of theta will be equal to cos of 2 pi plus theta. So let's look at what that means graphically. So what we're interested in now is theta, and we will take this now from 0 to 360 degrees. So the standard cosine curve is 0, 1. We come down, we come back up, like so. Now if I have some value, in this particular case, let's put it on 1 half, we're going to have a solution, and that is going to be now pi by 3. So if we got 1 pi by 3, that's theta. Now we've got 1 pi by 3 back from 2 pi. So this is 2 pi minus pi by 3, or if you like, 360 degrees minus 60 degrees. So what we can now write is the following. Theta plus pi by 4 is going to be equal to pi, uh, pi by 3 subtracted from 2 pi, so that's going to give us 5 pi by 3. If we wanted subsequent solutions, these would just be two pi radians on. We're not interested in those as they will fall outside the interval. So plus two pi n, plus two pi n. They are going to give me the subsequent solutions if I wanted them. If we just look though, we're interested in this now from pi by four to nine pi by four. So if I just went there, let's say it's going to be there and we're going to have there. We can see clearly there are two solutions in the given interval. So let's go ahead and just solve for these. Subtracting pi by 4 from the top one, we can say that theta is going to be pi by 3 minus pi by 4. A third minus a quarter is a 12. And then this one right here, we've got now theta will be equal to 5 pi by 3 minus pi by 4, which is going to give me 17 pi by 12. So any subsequent solutions quite clearly are going to be outside the interval. Again, if you wanted, you could just list out multiples and then see what fits in at the end. Rather than altering your interval and going this way, you could just list them out. Theta plus pi by 4 is pi by 3. And then theta plus pi by 4 is pi by 3 plus the 2 pi, which would give you 7 pi by 3. 
then subtract it and see if it falls in to the interval for theta between 0 and 2 pi. So that's an example using cosine and we've got now radian measures. Let's do one more. Um, let's look at something slightly different. Let's look at the tan now of x minus 20 degrees and this is going to be equal to 0 0.6. So this time we don't have a special angle and we'll take now x, let's go for x between, let's just change the interval, let's go for x between minus 118, let's push this out, let's go up to 720. So we've got a much bigger interval this time. So what I'm going to do is find a principal value. So principal value, PV, principal value now for x minus 20 is going to be equal to the inverse tan and we're working in degrees. 0.6. So let's find now a principal value. So if we do this now, we're in degrees mode, shift mode 3 if you're unsure. Inverse tan. So what we're going to have then is the inverse tan, and that's going to be now inverse tan of 0.6. So principal value, this is going to be 30.96. So x minus 20 is going to be equal to 30.96 dot 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 and so on. Now let's consider the symmetry of the tan curve, or I should say the periodic nature. We know that tan x will be equal to the tan of 180 plus x. So all we need to do is consider subsequent solutions. So all I'm going to do is a quick sketch here. Let's look at tan x. So tan x, this cycles every 180 degrees or pi radians. So we have now something looking like this. This is 90 degrees, asymptote. Remember, tan is undefined there. We come back round, we come up, another asymptote at 270, and every odd multiple now of our 90 degrees, and then we come back up, and that's 360. So what we're looking for now is the solution here. So we're going to run a line. This is going to be 0 0.2, and we have now, and let's put these on, let's put another asymptote. This is minus 90. So let's do that, and then what we'll do is come up, so it'll come round like so, and then round. So here, now, this is going to be the point here, so we've got 0, minus 90, we've got minus 180, we've got 90, we've got 180, 270, 360, and we can see this is going to keep going. So what this is going to do is find the principal value. So principal value for x minus 20 is going to give us a 30.96. So what we can say is the following x will be equal to, adding the 20 to both sides, we're going to have now 50.96 dot 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 plus now n multiples of 180. So 180n. So if I want to get the next one, I'm going to add 180. If I want the next one, I'm going to add 180 and 180 and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is just now, if we look at this in a calculator, I'm going to add my 20. So if I add the 20, I've got 50.96. So all I'm going to just do now is add and subtract multiples of 180. At this stage, what you could have said if you really wanted is x minus 20 is equal to 30.96 dot dot dot. x minus 20 is going to be equal to 30.96 plus now for 180, which is going to give us 210.96 dot dot dot. x minus 20 is going to be equal to adding now, so that's going to give us 390. 0.96 dot 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 and then of course we need to go the other way x minus 20 we're going to subtract 180 which would be minus 150.96 dot 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 and of course anything else will be outside that interval alternatively though we can just now add on the multiples and subtract multiples of 180 from here so what we're going to do then is the following this now is in my calculator so this is the answer a so if I go ahead and now subtract the 180, that's going to give us 129, and we'll do this to three significant figures. In fact, I'll do it to one decimal place, as we're going to, um, let's just go ahead and do it to one decimal place. So 129.0, so x is equal to minus 129.0. We've got now x, and all we've got here are simply, and we can see if I now went another 180 back, we'd be outside the interval. So we're going to add the 180, and we can see we're going to end up with a 50.96. I'll do that now to uh, one decimal place. So that will be uh, 51.0. Uh, and then if we add now, let's just add the 180. So plus 180, we're just adding multiples on. And this is your 180n. So plus 180. 
And again, to one decimal place, we're going to have 231.0. So 231.0. And hopefully you can see what's going to happen from here. If I go ahead now and add, so let's add the uh, plus 180. So plus for 180, we're going to end up now with 411.0. And these are just going to continue. So all we're doing now, we're going up to 720. At this stage, we can simply just go ahead now and add. So if I add 180, what's that going to give me? 5. Nine, uh, five, nine, one. Uh, then we're going to have zero. Uh, so I've just added now 180 to that one. Let's add another 180. So that's going to, if I do that, that's going to give me what we're going to have 771.0. 7, 7, uh, 7, 7, so we can see now that that is outside the interval. So that's all we've done. We've taken those, we've listed them out, and they are the solutions. And that is what we can see here. We just go along with them. So that's now solving for uh, a compound angle when the coefficient on the term in x or theta is just 1. In later videos, we will look when it isn't and how we deal with that. But hopefully that's given you an idea. You solve now for the principal value and then consider subsequent solutions, however you might want to do it. Whether you might want to change the interval at this point right here, if you want to write that this is x minus 20, and we consider now subtracting 20, which on this particular case, what are we going to get on that one? That's going to give us, what, minus 200. Let's just put that on. Uh, so if we subtract minus 200, and then we're going to get to 700. So we can see solving these, once we go outside these, they're not going to be... Uh, they're not going to be valid solutions for the given interval. So entirely up to you. Lots of different approaches. You decide and then uh, just play around with a few methods until you're comfortable.